a, a, rapid, a rapid response, like kind of COVID care for our congregation, like if people need um, just some food or, you know, just ways for us to express love practically to each other, to support each other. Because I think there can still be a sense of stigma and kind of like, you know, yeah, like, oh, I, I don't want to tell people I got it, but then I need to tell people and I'm going to isolate. And, and it's just so disruptive um, that we really feel like as a community, like we don't want to, we don't want that kind of sense of isolation um, or shame uh, or, or a sense of like kind of having to remove yourself, that there's ways that we can maybe like deliver groceries or just even offer a meal um, as a way of just showing, you know, our, our care for each other. Um, that that's something we should do. We should do as a community. And so before we kind of jump back into the <laughs> to Acts, I just felt like it was important for us to just be able to kind of gather around and, and just pray. I found a nice prayer that was, um, you know, I, I just Googled pandemic prayers. And this was a prayer that I felt like was just really great to kind of just remind us again of, um, you know, our need for God and, and our need for each other during this time. So just pray with me. Um, from this prayer that, that came from a pandemic, because since it still applies. Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sickness. Be joy in our sadness. Be light in our darkness. Be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar, that when the doors reopen, we may, with the zeal of Pentecost, inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue our series in Acts, you know, we're, we're, we're jumping back into Acts. Um, and, you know, this kind of talk about like internal threats, like, you know, with maybe mental health or external things like a pandemic or all these other things that are disrupting our lives. The early church in Acts faced both internal threats as well as external threats. You remember just before our passage this morning at chapter five, uh, before we jump into chapter six, we remember that there is this whole trial before the Sanhedrin with the Jewish leaders. Um, basically telling the disciples to stop preaching, you know, in Jesus name. And there, but there's not just these external challenges, but there's also um, internal things like from the get go, like dealing with Judas, uh, you know, and, and the fact that he had betrayed and then died and, and left this hole in leadership. Um, or as like we saw at the early part of chapter five, um, Ananias and Sapphira, conspiring to, to, you know, look like they were giving all of their money when in fact they were holding it on for themselves. So internal and external threats, this is nothing new for the church. This has happened in the early church. And so this morning, Amy's going to read our passage where Luke continues the story of an internal threat that was happening to the early church in Acts chapter 6, 1 through 7. Now, during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task. While we fall apart, We'll devote ourselves to prayer and to do and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Bocorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, apostolite of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, the number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Amen. Thanks, Amy. So before this passage, there's a, a thematic tie-in um, that I think we should we should note um, that connects with our passage this morning. And if you remember, uh, I know 
I know it's been a while <laughs> since we talked about X, but uh, there was the whole kind of trial, like, you know, um, telling, telling the apostles, you know, you need to stop preaching in Jesus name and you need to stop talking about this Jesus. Um, and then uh, the, one of the, the um, Sanhedrin members, a respected rabbi, Gamaliel, exhorts the leaders in chapter five and I think it's the point that Luke is trying to make in this whole account that he's talking about in Acts. So he tells them, and he gives advice to Jewish leaders. So in this present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origins, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may be found fighting against God. And so with that wisdom, uh, they release, you know, they tell them, hey, stop preaching about Jesus, but they release them because they're saying, okay, well, th th that makes sense. But I think that also frames what we're talking about here is like, that there's nothing is going to stop what God is going to do through his church. And this theme of God's mission is continuing despite both internal and external threats frames our passage as well. So if we look back at our, at our passage again, you'll see and i've kind of highlighted it here now in the like that there's this framing of the disciples increasing in numbers so we see like hey the disciples are increasing in numbers and then at the end of our passage you see the word of god continues to spread and the number of disciples increase greatly and so there's a sense of growth that's happening there's crisis uh, that comes from that or there's an internal challenge that comes from that the challenge once the challenge is addressed the growth continues afterwards and so it's kind of like, again, going, and we can go all the way back to Acts chapter 1-8. What does Jesus say to his disciples? That you will be my witnesses, right? That you will be my witnesses. Um, and throughout Judea, you know, Jerusalem, Judea, um, and Samaria, and to the, you know, and to the ends of the earth. Um, and so this is like Luke just kind of propelling the narrative forward by saying like, hey, there's growth here, and here's a challenge, but the, but the church was able to overcome that challenge, and then the church continues to grow. Now, when I was growing up uh, in the church, my, my home church in Massachusetts uh, had a board that had both a, an elder board and, and a deacon board, and a lot of it was kind of taking it from, and so the reading of Acts chapter six was like, Hey, this is uh, Luke saying this is the way we should structure our leadership. Like you should have elders who kind of take care of the preaching of the word, the spiritual kind of care. And and, um, and then the deacons were the ones who are like, you know, they're paying the electricity bill. They're making sure, you know, like the properties being kept up and, um, you know, they'll take collections for food or something like that. And so there's a real kind of like the sense of dichotomy between like the spiritual, the more spiritual elders and then the deacons, you know, this is kind of saying like, hey, this is elders and deacons uh, that, that kind of did the other stuff, you know, like the stuff that wasn't as spiritual, but was necessary for the, for the church to do. Uh, but, you know, as, but it, I don't think it really fits here, you know, that kind of like clear dichotomy of like, oh, this is the way we should do church and we should do leadership. Because if anything, we see that Steve, especially Stephen and Philip, what, what Luke, how Luke describes what they do afterwards is clearly not just, you know, waiting on tables. They're clearly not just doing in charge of the distribution and doing like the unspiritual, quote unquote, unspiritual stuff for the, the you know, the preaching and proclamation. Because right after this passage, it says Stephen, Stephen performed signs and wonders uh, like the apostles. Uh, and he gives the longest sermon uh, in the entire book of Acts. And then right after that, Philip, we see, evangelizes to an Ethiopian official. And then he does this whole evangelism tour in Samaria as well. And so I don't think this is just a structure thing. Like Luke doesn't dwell on like a structure thing or saying like this isn't a mandate for churches at all times. But only as it's connected, like structure that's connected to the growing witness of the spirit at work in the church. And so I think, again, like going back to Acts 1 8, it really fits within, you know, the thesis, right? Like Jesus saying at the beginning, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria. And so Luke is, is taking this 
particular episode in the early church and clearly establishing in this story that the next group of spirit-filled individuals are going to be these Hellenistic Jews, you know, like Stephen and Philip, who are going to launch the next stage of witness and proclamation of Jesus Christ, you know, out into the world. And so I, I think that was like, you know, for me, it's like, oh, okay. So it's not necessarily just like saying, oh, this is a this is how we structure church, but it's really like this is how we structure for mission. This is this, this is really more instructional about like how do we organize so that the mission continues um because that's important you know and and how do we organize in such a way um so that even when the deficiencies and challenges that will inevitably come up anytime there's growth can ruin or or sidetrack that mission like we need to be able to address those things um so as a as a church, as a church community, River of Life, you know, we have to deal with the, the kind of cracks that happen. So, so Luke talks about this crack between the Hellenists and the, and the, and the Hebrew, um, the Hebraic Jews, right? The widows. Um, and so it kind of made me think about like when I was in England, if you've ever been in England and taken the, the underground and there, there's always the sign like mind the gap, you know, that little tiny gap between where the train is and the and uh, and the the, the state you know the station landing like where you're where you're standing because if you don't mind the gap, um, you're gonna disastrous consequences can follow right, um, and so in the same line same way if we look at that that picture of the concrete, um, if we don't address the cracks that are happening, then you're gonna end up with like really big holes right. If we don't mind the gaps, like there's disastrous consequences of fall, and if we don't address the things that will never be happen, like the fault lines, the tensions that happens in this community, and you know, there's nothing here that says that this is like necessarily unjustified sort of concern, but that word grumbling, like that that was that was saying, like you know, there's this kind of complaint that's happening. It's the same word that's used um, when they the Hellenists complain against the Hebrews. That word complain is the same word that's used in Exodus for the murmuring or the complaining against Moses. So this is like, if this was not addressed, this crack could become a hole and then it becomes uh, a, a cause of serious division and conflict within the church. And so I think if we think about like many of our own experiences too, maybe with church, like I, I, the first church I started serving when I was in seminary had a, had a split, and I've told you that story before. Um, but I'm sure many of us can can relate to times when we've been in communities of, of faith uh, where that disunity and dis division, uh, it just hampered any sense of talking about like vision uh, or mission and, and outreach or any sort of forward movement of God's mission. Because everyone's just kind of like, you know, in this sort of like having to figure out like which camp they're in and it becomes all this kind of drama and politics. Um, and, and I want to assure you, like, I want to assure you that this point in our, our early life as River of Life, uh, I'm pretty confident that we're still in some sort of like honeymoon stage, you know, that, that there's not any sort of obvious cracks that I want to try to address here <laughs> as a church. So I want to kind of give you like confidence. I don't, I don't as far as I know, uh, I don't think there's any of that right now in, in our community because you know this is this is uh, this is the early stages. Um, but I guarantee that they will come, right? Uh, Luke is not trying to paint you know merely just a, a pretty picture of a perfect church here in Acts. There's there's going to be uh, tensions and cracks that happen, and we're going to continue to see them happen, both external and internal. Um, within the story of the early church. And so it's gonna to happen to us. And I think it will happen to us as particularly if, you know, we start growing and we start adding more people that there's going to be these kinds of cracks that appear. And just like in Acts chapter six, just like in our passage. But I, I think what's great about this passage too is that, that we don't have to fear those cracks. You know, we don't have to be like, oh, like, you know, Cracks are, are to be feared, right? Like cracks are to be something we need to be afraid of. Because I think what's helpful in, in Luke's telling it is how they also addressed those very legitimate grumblings that were coming before them uh, to the leadership. 
and if allowed to grow, would have become a hindrance to their mission. And this is a case where a rapid response test, you know, you do want it to be positive. Like you want it to be positive. You want it to be like a rapid response is necessary for, uh, for this crack to not become a hole. Okay. Uh, and I think there's great wisdom in how they responded and diffused the tensions and the cracks that were starting to form in this community. Tensions and cracks that came because they were growing, because they were growing and, and, and now you like had a more, much more diverse community. Um, these tensions were inevitably going to rise, but this is how they addressed it. So if we look at the passage again, look at all the names of who they chose. And I highlighted it in, in red as well. So obviously Stephen and Philip we've talked about. And then all these other names that we see in the passage, these are all Greek names. Okay. They're not they're not Hebrew names. And so the community and the congregation um, chose seven men who were, had Greek, you know, who went by these Greek names. And now they're, they were most likely obviously Jewish, like Hellenist Jews, but they had this, because they were Hellenist, they had these Greek names. And so the genius, I think of like, or the practicality of them just really representing the membership of those in the church who were being overlooked was one of the great, you know, you know, that's pleased the whole community. And so they chose these seven men full of faith in the Holy Spirit, but they chose men who represented uh, that part of the community that were not, um, whose widows were being overlooked. And, and I think this is like, this is just a great example, right? Like of, of, you know, being able to address something quickly they responded quickly, and not only that, they also picked representation from those um, who were being overlooked. And so today, during our service, we are choosing three additional board members to join our current board team. And we have, by the grace of God, five candidates who we agreed. And we were just hoping for at least one person, because we our bylaws say we need to have three people minimum on the board and we we're down to two so we were just hoping out of the five one of you <laughs> would say yes i would be willing to join the board but all five of you said that you're willing to join so we're like oh okay so this morning we have a chance to be able to choose uh three out of the five and i want to assure uh those of you who are the kind of the board candidates or nominees that if you're not selected Next year, we need more, <laughs> we'll need board members. So don't take it personally, right? Um, there's so much, there's so much that uh, you're able to do whether or not you're on the board. And so um, I, I just want to kind of give you just that, that assurance, you know, there's always next year and there's still, <laughs> there's still other work that needs to be done um, as part of our community. But I think what I've also appreciated in some of my conversations with some of you as you've been exploring, like, hey, you know, what, is this, what does this mean to be on the board? Uh, you know, how many times do we need to meet? Like, what, what's it gonna be like? Um, but some of you really asked like good questions about like, hey, you know, I'm really hoping that our, our church board is gonna reflect and represent our, our whole community, okay? That it's gonna reflect the diversity of our membership because we are a di you know maybe we take it for granted but we're we are a diverse group you know we have different ages different ethnicities different cultures different socioeconomics um different backgrounds you know and and, and that's what i love about river of life and, and i would expect like our leadership team you know not just like the leadership team that that um that meets on Mondays every night by our board leadership team is also reflecting that diversity, which, you know, is, is not just reflecting well for us in, in terms of our own sort of internal community dynamics, but I think externally too, like when we're talking about mission, when we're talking about reaching out to our community, that we have that, that same diversity represented, you know, on our leadership team um, as we're reaching out um, to our community. And so today, you know, uh, we're, we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be selecting board members um, that, that are gonna represent um, us as a whole community. Um, 
and as well as to the community. But one thing that we also realize as we're kind of think, reflecting on this passage is that a couple of weeks ago, we asked some of you, to, uh, we asked all of us actually to fill out a moving forward document. Um, and I, I'm just gonna let you know, and maybe it's just kind of hard to do it on Sundays, but only one person filled it out. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure all of you have some sort of computer skill. So we are kind of wanting to also say, hey, as we're moving forward for 2022, um, there's definitely going to be a need for more people stepping up to, to serve in, in all areas of, of what we are doing. And so serve like calling our, our board members is obviously one of the main things we, we need to do. But we're also really trying to call everybody to say like, hey, you know, where's an area that you're willing to, to serve, to explore in, or an area of passion? And um, so as we're doing the election for the board, we're also wanting you to fill out the Google form um, for moving forward, because uh, as we're trying to plan, you know, we can't plan as a leadership team if we, if we don't get a sense of what people's capacities and abilities are. Um, because as you know, it, it, many of you probably know that it takes a lot of effort um, to do what we do um, on services. And especially if we start meeting more in person on Sundays, with an additional online component that we're still going to keep, you know, we're going to do like in-person services, but we're still going to have online, you know, uh, and so that's why we're still working on like getting um, the uh, some sort of hardwired uh, a Wi-Fi set up at the clubhouse at Barnes Park so that we can make sure that we have good uh, online component, um, even if we meet in person. So all that to say. Luke here shows us in this very short passage that, you know, a growing church's ability to address the tensions and potential cracks in the community. Um, you know, if we're able to do that in, in, a, in a quick way, if we deal with the issues straight on, uh, and I want to say, like, there is part of that moving forward document that we're going to share on our chat. Um, there's a section at the bottom where we want to just invite you like if you have concerns like maybe maybe i don't i don't see it cracks any sort of cracks or or feedback or concerns that you want to give to us as leadership like we want to we want to be able to take that we want to make sure that there is uh open a sense of open communication and channels when those issues come up um for you so we want to be able to do that and um and as we look into this new year uh, we pray, uh, we just need to have more clarity. You know, I think uh, as a leadership team, uh, as a community, uh, just continue to pray for us and, and pray for our community that we will gain that clarity on how we can address any cracks that may be happening so that we can structure effectively uh, to continue our, our witness and proclamation of Jesus Christ um, in, our, in our community. And so before we take... Uh, elect our new board members. Um, let's just take some time to prepare ourselves um, and just remind ourselves of our of our unity in Christ. And so we're going to take uh, communion together. This is our first Sunday uh, of the year and of the month. And um, yeah, before we take our vote, I think it's just good for us um, before the communion table uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ that that we come together in unity. Um, and, and just realizing again and again our, our need for deep communion uh, with our Lord and Savior who welcomes, welcomes us uh, with his open arms. So there's um, uh, so a little bit of a longer worship song, but it's called Oh Come to the Altar. I like this arrangement. Um, so take some time to be able to just prepare yourself, um, go and get your, your bread in your cup. Um, and at the end of, of the uh, song, um, I'm going to read uh, a few passages and then we're going to take communion together. And just so for this video, particular video, I, I realized there was something that kind of distracted me as I was watching, but some of them are wearing shirts that said, got Zamar. <laughs> and so I was like, what does that mean? So Zamar is the, the Hebrew word for, for worship, uh, worship and singing and praise. So that is basically like got worship is basically what they're saying. Uh, on their t-shirts. So um, so let's have this time of just being able to, to just prepare ourselves for communion and uh, uh, take this time also to um, get your communion elements. We talk about service. 
um, that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And then what I read from, from Paul when he said that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you were the ultimate example of service and servanthood and that we are wise to look to you for our example of what it means for um, to serve those uh, around us in our community, both in our church and here in River of Life, but also uh, to your community. So we thank you again of this, this gift and of grace that you have given us uh, through your body and blood and that empowers us um, to be the kinds of servants um, that we need for each other and for the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So at this time, we're asking, we're going to be dropping, so this is going to be a little bit how we're going to be doing our, our board election, is that we're going to be dropping uh, two documents. One is uh, in the chat. So one is going to be for the board nominations. We have five names. And out of those five, uh, you are allowed to choose three because the, the goal is to expand our board from three to five. Okay. So you're just going to put your name. So we need your name because if you're a member, we need to, to kind of basically uh, tally that uh, you're a member that can vote. Okay, and then you just pick three. Please only pick three <laughs> on the ballot. And then when you submit it, then we can kind of tally it up. The, the second document we're gonna be putting in the chat is the, the form that I had mentioned before for, for all of us um, to consider like, how are we gonna move forward? Um, where are we potentially being able to serve? And so we're gonna take some time to be able to do that as well. So you're gonna be voting and then you're also going to be filling out the moving forward document. Now, for those of us who might be challenged to uh, having, you know, technical issues, or it's like hard for you to figure out like how to how to do the online. Um, towards the end, uh, we're going to put our board um, candidates into a breakout room, and then you can vote like online here live, uh, and then we can kind of get your your three votes as well. Okay, and then we'll bring back um, our board um, nominees and let and let them know um, what the vote is, and we're going to spend some time just praying for for all of us, uh, for for the church, uh, for our new leadership. Um, so hopefully that's not too confusing. <laughs> so okay, so um, we're going to keep everyone here. We're going to put pull a little music on, but um, we're going to drop those two doc, uh, two links, Abner, I think, into the chat so that we can have some time to vote um, and also a time to fill out the form, um, the moving forward form about years of being able to serve um, for this year. If, if you guys have any problems with um, the forms, please let me know ASAP. They'll be coming back in eight seconds. Okay. 
Everybody back? Is everyone back? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're back. All right. So Abraham, Amy, Carlos, um, Sergio, and Janelle, like we wanted to thank you all for um, for saying yes to even just being considered. So, um, so we did do the uh, the vote, um, and so for twenty twenty two. Uh, our new additional board members will be Abraham, Amy, and Carlos. So, woohoo! Yay! Hey, thank you all for thank you, thank up. you all. And we want to just spend a little bit of time just praying for our, our new um, our new board leaders. Okay. Yeah, Lord, we we just thank you um, and are grateful for just the way that. Um, everyone we asked was willing to, to step up. And so we just asked that like, uh, whether or not they're, they've, um, they've been voted in for this year, Lord, that, um, yeah, we just were reminded of um, your example of, of servanthood, um, of love, um, uh, love for others. And uh, just ask Lord that we just continue to look to you um, as the author and perfecter of our faith and of our service to, to one another and to our community. So we pray for blessing upon our, our new board members. Um, we pray that this new board uh, moving forward for, for 2022, that you grant them wisdom, the filling of your spirit, Lord, um, uh, so that we may be able to uh, continue to seek you in, in the mission that you have called us as River of Life. Yeah, Lord, I just pray that you would give our five members of the board just wisdom, Lord, in, in decision-making. God, I pray for uh, just unity in terms of uh, thinking and, and clarity and, and where you're leading us as a church, Lord. Father, we don't, we don't take uh, positions of leadership lightly. And I thank you that all, all everybody, everybody that we talked to prayed, Lord, and uh, spent time with you, spent time reflecting on their personal walk with you and their, their walk in the church. And Father, I thank you that, that you have led uh, people to, yeah, to, to help lead um, your mission, Lord, uh, here in this church and, and Lord beyond, Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for people who are uh, in love with you and, and want to partner with you, Lord, uh, to see the advancement of your kingdom. Lord, thank you for everyone who, who continues to step into leadership uh, at River of Life and just in your church uh, all around, Lord God, different, different ways that um, your people are heeding the call uh, to serve, to grow. Um, Lord, I thank you for all the ways that we, will, that we will be growing as a church community this year, Lord. There, is, there are a lot of things, <clears throat> issues that need to be addressed, Lord, and the board will be obviously a, a big part of that and an important piece of that, Lord, but, but this is going to take all of us uh, coming together, uh, continuing to pray, discern what your will is, Lord, and, and giving, giving whatever it is of our time or, or, or abilities that we can give, Lord, to, um, to following you where you're calling us, Lord, in, in many different ways, so... We lay this all at your feet, Lord, and we um, we just say, Shepherd, lead us, lead us, lead us where you want us to go. I pray in Jesus' name. Yeah, and Lord, I just pray, would you fill each one on the board with your Holy Spirit? And I, Lord, I pray, would you give them discernment? I pray that you would fill them most of all with love for you. God, I pray um, that sense of, of understanding. Well, God, what is it that you wanting to do? I just pray for this board, that this board would be quick to pray and to seek your face and to ask you what you're doing and how you're leading. We see in the book of Acts, this is really the movement of the spirit. And so we pray for this board. Would you fill them with the Holy Spirit? But would you also help them be attentive to the Holy Spirit? Um, and the Holy Spirit's leading, would you give them the wisdom from heaven, not just their own, but wisdom from heaven 
for the task at hand. So equip them with every spiritual gift that they need. Um, and I pray also for unity among them, their ability to work well together, to listen to one another, to respect one another, to um, also I pray for the board, for them to be able to share what they think, honestly, even if they're the only voice that thinks differently than the other ones, Lord, would you give them courage to um, speak up and, and advocate for the things they sense you're doing, Lord. So we just pray for the unity and uh, anointing on this board, Lord, um, in Jesus' name, God. Amen, y'all. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well done, ROL. Come on. Well done. Man, having to pivot, doing stuff online. Thank you, Jesus. You, you guys are champs. <laughs> uh, Jesse, any any final final words of encouragement on your end? Or should we transition into announcements? Oh, you're going to announcements. Thank you okay. again um, for all who stepped up. So. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I want to add my thank you to everyone who's just been uh, willing to continue to lead in, in different ways. And um, yeah, keep, keep, keep your eyes and your ears and your hearts open because there'll be plenty of, plenty of opportunities for all of us this year. Um, and sharing announcements, I want to let you know first that we are getting back to our weekly life groups starting this week. So, you know, Wednesday group will meet on Wednesday, Thursday will meet on Thursday, um, and then Sundays will be back uh, next Sunday. Um, so look for communication from your, from your group leaders about details and how that's all going to go down um, and anything, that you, anything else you need to know. Thank you also for the ways that you gave last year in 2021 and um, just continuing to support the work that um, the Lord is leading us into. Um, and again, as our, as our needs hopefully begin to change, um, as we start to meet in person, um, when, it's, when it's the right timing for us to do so, um, you know, some of our, our financial needs will change. Also, I um, want to let you know that our, our pre-service prayer happens um, on, uh, uh, on Sundays at seven o'clock. And then if you do need prayer, if you have any questions for us, if you would like to talk over anything with any of our leaders, um, please stay on after our service. And we'd love to hear from you. Um, I think that's actually all we have for right now. I think we I think we piled it up pretty good during the holidays, did a lot of stuff. So we're not going to pile on more as the year begins. Um, we're going to give you some time to breathe and get your bearings for the year. So thank you so much for joining today. Look forward to uh, communicating with you all throughout the week and then seeing you next week. So stay in touch and please don't hesitate to reach out where, uh, where there are needs. That's all I got. All right, everybody <laughs> could uh, go into gallery view, unmute yourselves, and uh, hey. say goodbye to the community. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy, New Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Have a good Bye. Happy New Year. Stay safe.